Hey there friends, welcome back to my channel. I am excited to come on and create a two page layout uh, documenting these very, very meaningful photos from just one week ago. So if you've been following me, you know that Close to My Heart is closing their doors at the end of April and new beginnings are on the horizon for me coming May 1st as a Stamping Up demonstrator. And last week I had the opportunity to travel to Utah and meet and work with Close to My Heart executive staff and the Stampin', Stamping Up executive staff. And it was a really, really rewarding experience. The highlight I would have to say is um, as we concluded the weekend, we were brought back to the Close to My Heart home office and we got to spend some really uh, special moments with Jeanette our founder founder and CEO I'm actually getting emotional and I'm I'm tongue-tied but Jeanette is our founder and CEO of close to my heart and she gave me my roots and um, I owe it all to her for my paper crafting journey and I owe it all to her as she and Monica and the rest of Close to My Heart worked so closely and so tirelessly in a very short amount of time to create a new home for Close to My Heart makers with Stampin' Up! should they choose to take that opportunity. So this was a really, really special moment for me to get to talk to Jeanette and um and say my goodbyes to her. I should I, I shouldn't say goodbye. I, I use the word goodbye. I should say our see you later's. But this was Jeanette and I just one week ago today. And this was Jeanette and I on one of the incentive trips I had earned back in 2006. So I um wanted to document all these together on a two-page layout and I decided to use the current Mixins collection from Close to My Heart. This is the May, the, uh, the uh, March-April Mixins collection. As you can see, I have been using it. Uh, this is actually, I think, my third pack of this. I love this paper and so let's see what we can do with that. Um, I thought that the sage and perhaps the periwinkle might go well with these photos. I'm also going to bring in um, some stenciling. So I pulled my stencil pack one. Um, this is in our current annual book. It is still available and I really like the the beautiful. I'm thinking I'm going to use the beautiful. I might use some other, the, the new 4x4 four four stencils as well. So that's going to be the technique I want to focus on. At least I think so at this point. And I'm going to pull in some of the dies from the decorative shape Thin cuts. Now this is currently unavailable. It's slated to come back sometime in April um, uh, from the recording of this video. I do think that they're going to sell fast because this is such a popular um, product, but I am going to use this and I might throw in some of the decorative borders that were created for the Cardstock Carnival, which ends on March 31st. So I'm gonna clear my desk and let's see what we can come up with. Okay, I've pulled um, my Verzimat in and I've got my white daisy cardstock as my base. We're gonna work on the left side first. I went ahead and matted my photos <clears throat> just to save time and I just cut an eighth of an inch larger piece of white daisy. And I think that will allow the photos to pop. And then I went through my um, decorative shapes and I actually had all of these thin cuts already cut, which was kind of fun. Lots of times when I do thin cutting, I'll do a whole bunch and then just stick them in the envelope with my die cuts and then I have them for future projects. So we'll see if we can make these work. The colors definitely coincide with the palette I'm going with. I did pull uh, two of my pink, my flamingo pink uh, decorative border uh, die cuts from the um, Cardstock Carnival special. And I pulled the pink because I thought it matched. I picked the green 
pattern papers from the mixins and this is actually a zip strip and how fitting is that because it's hearts and then i am pairing it with my um uh, shortbread cardstock. So let's start by adhering this cardstock. I am mainly using cardstock other than a little bit of that um, pattern paper again because I am making use of my um, cardstock carnival. And this is going to go flush right. Uh, in the middle thereabouts so i'm going to go down to the ten and a half and to the two and i like that so there is a border up here border down here and then on the side and then when i go ahead to do the uh, right side i will um, continue this shortbread over um, and then I thought we would take our pretty sage color. Either pattern would work great, but I am going to stick with this pretty pattern for this particular um, this particular layout. And we're going to put this flush with that right side again. Um, but you know what? Before we do that, I think I want to add this border. And maybe we'll do that flush just like this. You see why I love the close to my heart adhesive? Because it gives us a grace period. So I have not uh, pre-cut this. It is a 12 inch length, but what I am going to do is start way over here. And I'm using the light side of this. So I thought that would be a nice contrast with the, the light side of this ballerina heart. So I'm kind of choosing my papers to go not only with my photos, but with what I had in stock. Now I'm gonna get my scissors and we'll just trim this. It looks like I have something on this. So let me get my rub and remove eraser i know it's here somewhere just rub that right off this is magic it's like a magic eraser <laughs> all right so this is gonna go like that and i like that and then what i'm thinking this is gonna go flush And then this will line up with this one. And then what I'm thinking is I could take this stencil and stencil beautiful. I'm not going to use the days. I'm going to, I have a stamp that says moments. So I think I might say beautiful moments. Now the question is, what color do I stencil? I think black would be too dark um, but maybe a, a toffee and what I think we're going to do is do a little practice on a piece of scrap paper all right so I pulled my all-purpose mat in I've got my toffee ink and then I pulled my yellow brown brushes so if you're looking for a way to store your uh, blending brushes I have been in the process of remodeling my studio and um, the organizers that we currently sell I think they're called photo organizers I will uh, list in the description box all the products that I use but you can purchase the big box that has I think 24 of these little boxes that fit four by six photos perfectly I do use one of them for photos one of the boxes with the 24 little boxes but then I have two of the big boxes and all these little containers I store embellishments with and then I have another one that I store all my blending brushes in color families so if you're looking for a way to 
store those where they're easily accessible and where you can see what you have. I do recommend um, storing something like that. It's worked really well for me. So I'm going to pick up some of my ink with my blending brush. I'm going to tap off on my um, all-purpose mat. The other thing I am going to do is take some of my masking tape. Um, I love this stuff. I'm going to mask off that daze, and I'm going to get some more of this tape and just adhere this so it doesn't move. I tend to, when I am on camera, I tend to be a little bit more rough and it moves. So I'm going to tap off again, and then I'm going to start off lightly because when you stencil, it always ends up being more on the page than what you think. And I'm just going really lightly, and I am doing circular motions. And I I tend to when I stencil, I don't I don't go for the whole title looking the same, like have the same amount of ink, the same density. I kind of like it to be a little bit different. So let's see, I can see right here that I got a little bit from that daze and I got up there, but let's see how this looks paired on our page. And I think, I think I like that. So we're going to go ahead and go for it. Let's adhere our pictures first and that will give me an idea of where to place my title. And let's hope that I do a good job on camera. I tend to get camera shy, <laughs> camera shock. Um, the stamp set that I'm using that has the moments is from the most recent album retreat that Close to My Heart did last, it was actually this month, it was the beginning of March, but I'm gonna take the moments set. And if you have ever participated in a Close to My Heart album retreat, you know how awesome these stamp sets are. I think that I need a wider stamp that, oops, my camera just went down. So sorry about that. The camera, the stand just lost its, lost its balance. So let's go ahead and get our, nope, that's still not wide enough. Let me get another block. And, all right, so what I did is I just put this on on an angle because I don't want it any longer than that. But what I'm thinking is this memories could go right here. So let's put this down and pretend like this was like this. And then our memories could go there. So I am going to ink this up and I will use the toffee ink. Well, let's do a test again. How many of you do tests on your scraps before you actually? So let's see, if this was like this, I was thinking I would go, maybe I'll even, well, maybe we'll do it right here like this. Let's see. I don't know, I kind of want it over more. Let's try this. Yeah, I think we're gonna do that. I think I'm gonna do the memories right above this photo. And I am liking the toffee ink. So there, you got a little sneak peek of how I finagle through things. All right, so now let's bring in our stencil. And I'm 
lining it up so that the F, the, the tail of the F goes right there. And I think I am liking this. So I'm going to make sure that I cover up that little bit that I did stencil. And then we're gonna come up here like this. And I'm gonna get some more. All right here, and as you can see, I reuse my, my masking tape a lot. It lasts a long time. Okay, so now let's give this a go. I'm gonna tap off and just take my time. And we'll see how we do. So stenciling is just another way to add embellishments to your projects and another form of texture, which is kind of fun. And what's nice about stenciling, kind of like stamping, is you can use whatever colors and you have control over how dark or light you want it. You can do ombre, all kinds of different things. And there's so many stencils out there. I have shared in the past how you can make stencils to coordinate with your stamp sets too. Now I'm trying to get this top of the B and so I can see already that I've made this part of the B darker but I think I'm liking this. So let's um, take a peek. Oh yeah. Oh, I like. So beautiful memories. When you're done with your stencils, I just run them under um, the faucet and then I tap them dry with a paper towel and let them air dry. And that's how I do that. But I am really liking that. I think the toffee was a good, choice and you can see with the blending brushes how you get that nice soft look and then if we um, i did have this border and maybe we'll just to bring in some more pink maybe we'll do this right there like that and then with my hearts Maybe I can have them coming up. Oops. Like this. Another little fuzzy there. Now the one thing I did not use is this. Maybe put that down there. I do kind of want to use this. That might be kind of fun. Let's lift this up. That might be kind of fun just to add the hearts and to coordinate that. So I am liking this. Um, I'm going to adhere these off camera and I'll trim that. And then we'll go ahead and do the corresponding page and see where we're at. All right, so I pulled in my second base page and I've got some pieces pre-cut, pulling in those uh, die cut borders from Cardstock Carnival and I've got another zip strip and I've got some more hearts that I found in the Decorative Shapes Thin Cuts. And then I have another piece of scrap of that pattern paper. So what I am going to do is bring in the page we just completed, just so that I can line up <clears throat> the, um, the two pages together. I'm gonna put this on my Versa mat. And we will add our shortbread cardstock. So I'm keeping all of the same papers it's just that on this left side, I am using the paper in the full 12 by 12 length. 
So that's going to go at ten and a half and two. And that looks good. And then I can take this die cut border. Were you able to scoop some of these die cut borders up? They are so fun. I was creating cards over in my uh, customer Facebook group with them. So they aren't just for scrapbooking, but talk about a great embellishment brilliant. I wish they were in our regular line. <laughs> um, and then let's go ahead and put this down and then I'll show you how I mat it my photos. So this is just going to go flush right at the bottom. And I just love that little um, detail with the heart. So I think this is good. Um, and then this is how I mat it my photos. So it's two four by six photos and I cut one mat. So this is eight, eight and one eighth by six and one eighth. And um, that's sometimes a fun way to mat your photos, two photos on one mat. I don't always do that, and that was what was fun. Um, I kind of was just pulling out some things that I haven't used in the past. Now I'm gonna adhere this flush with the inside of my right page and just lining it up with the photo from the left page. So <clears throat> I like that. So we'll move this aside now, and then this, piece I thought could go right here. So it's adding, you know, continuing this pattern onto this page. I'm going to put that right in the center like that. And then we can add maybe these hearts to embellish. And, um, I was thinking of maybe adding some stenciling to the hearts, maybe some dry embossing and some stenciling. So I've got the Swiss Dots embossing folder. I've got the Biddy Flower stencil. So that could be two different ways to, um, to add some texture to the hearts. And then maybe we'll do some stamping on another one. All right, so I've got my hearts here and I off camera went ahead and dry embossed the small hearts. I use the four by four stripe embossing folder and the four by four Swiss dots embossing folder and I'll hold these up. They come out, they emboss really, really nicely. I'm not gonna sand them because I'm not going for that type of look, but that is definitely an option to do. And then with the larger pink hearts, I'm gonna take the small flower floral stencil and I am going to strategically place this where I can get a lot of flowers. And I think what I might do, here's a little hack. I'm gonna add a little bit of adhesive to the back of this. And then I'm gonna take that masking tape and tape this down. And then I've got my ballerina pink ink pad. And I'm gonna get my pink, actually, yeah, I'm gonna get my pink blending brush and do the exact same thing with the stenciling. I am using a lighter hand on this, but the same technique where I'm going in circular motions. Let's see how that looks. Yes, I like that. And then let's go ahead and do the same thing to this one. Add a little bit of adhesive. 
This all-purpose mat is perfect for things like this. Stick down my masking tape. And just add my ink. So what I'm doing is just giving a little bit more pizzazz to my cardstock hearts, which is going to give some more um, interest to my page. So we've got some more stenciling, we've got the dry embossing, and then for the white hearts, what I think I'm gonna do is I pulled out this Parisian floral stamp set. I believe it's no longer available, but I like the flower with all the words. I mean, any of these images would work, but I just want to add some texture to these, and I'm not even gonna put this on a block. I am just gonna ink it up because this is such a small area and just stamp once. Do the same thing. There we go. So now you can see we've added quite a bit of visual interest to all of these die cuts. I'm gonna move my Versa mat or my all-purpose mat out of the way. I'll clean that in a minute, but let's go ahead and bring back the left side and we can play with these a little bit. So I'm thinking that this could go like this. And I like how we've got the darker pink with the lighter pink. And then kind of just add these floating up. So this is a really basic, clean, I like to call it a clean layout, but I like it. Um, it's totally focusing on the pictures so we'll do the same thing over here um, I don't know if I want to do this maybe over here like this And then I could do my journaling right here, maybe have a tag and do my journaling. I don't know if I like that tucked under though. Maybe go like this. Oh, I kind of like that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and adhere this off camera and get a journaling tag. And then I think we're gonna be done. All righty, everything is adhered now. And then I went ahead and cut a piece of white daisy and did my journaling. And I was thinking that this could go right here. And how I got those lines is I pulled in my Versamat and there is an image again on the uh, virtual album retreat stamp set. I use these lines right there and I lined up my white daisy so that the lines lined up with the lines on the mat and then did my stamping. And that's how I got it so perfectly. Love the Versa mat. I wrote my journaling off camera because I tend to think better on my own, not on camera. So let's go ahead and adhere this and I'll put this right here over the heart. And I, I like that because it kind of mimics on here how this one is underneath the photo. And then what I did is I pulled out my tabs and tags thin cut. This has been around and it's been in stock. I'm not sure if it sold out this weekend, but again, I will list everything in the uh, product description box below. But I used this tab and I cut a piece from my scrap of this pattern paper, and I thought I could add that here. Um, let's see, do I want it here like that? Yeah, I think I do. We'll put it like that. I could even get a piece of twine and add um, some twine there, or let's see, I've got this with the gold. 
I think I like that because it brings in the toffee from the journaling or from the stenciling. So let's go ahead, teach you a trick. When you have twine on a spool and it's kind of kinked like this, I just put it between my bone folder and my thumb and just go like that and the kinks are out. So I'm gonna double this and I wonder if this is big enough. I might need to get a bigger piece, but we will see. Yeah, let's get a bigger piece. I can tie bows pretty good. Um, thanks to having girls, I would put big bows in their ponytails. So I'm gonna get the kinks out again. We'll double this up. Trim this, and then I'll do a double bow. It's hard to believe that these pictures were taken a week ago. With the the, the events of this week, it seems like that was months ago. <laughs> so I'm just double, doubling the bow. And that could go right there like that. And I think I want the tails to be just a little bit longer. So we'll trim this, trim that. And then another thing I like to do is take my piercing tool and I like to just fray the edges. And the piercing tool allows you to do that really, really easily and quickly, as you can see. So we've got a lot of different mediums in here to embellish this all, practically all cardstock layout. We're adding some twine. We're adding <clears throat> some um, thin cuts that we've stenciled on. We're adding um, thin cuts that we dry embossed and our title was stenciled. And then we've got those decorative borders and they all come together to create a really nice layout. So let's pull in the other side. Here is the right side. And here is the left side. Very clean, very simple, but it is definitely highlighting the special moment of these photos. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that you enjoyed creating with just cardstock, adding some stencils and dry embossing and stamping. Um, if you like this video and could give me a thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. And you haven't already hit the subscribe button, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I am 30 away from reaching the 1000 subscriber goal. So thank you for all of your support. I look forward to the next video and we'll catch you then. Bye-bye.